Now, while you are not considered a lawyer and you're not expected to be a lawyer, you nonetheless have to have some awareness of laws and standards. So let's talk about uh, some of these, ISO and PCI DSS and HIPAA and SOX and DMCA and FISMA and such. Just have some awareness. Uh, first, the payment card industry data security standard, PCI DSS. Uh, this is a standard that is industry set. It's not a legal requirement, although I have to tell you that some states are starting to point to it. Uh, this was an agreement between the credit card um, companies to securely handle cardholder information for debit cards, credit cards, prepaid cards, e-purse, ATM, point of sale, etc. It applies to anybody involved in payment processing. Um, it's a high, over, high level overview of the requirements. Uh, these were developed and maintained by the PCI Security Standards Council. So the whole idea is that you need to maintain and build a secure network, implement strong access control, protect cardholder data, regularly monitor and test networks, maintain a vulnerability management program, and maintain an information security policy. ISO, so this is the International Organization of Standards. They've got a whole series, 27,000, from 1 to 2013. This, um, well actually it's updated to 27,001, 2013. The whole 27,000 series, there's all these subparts, but the 27,001 specifies requirements for establishing, implementing, maintaining, and Im improving your security management system. And it includes use within the organization, cost effectiveness, guarantee of compliance. It defines information security management processes. Uh, it identifies and clarifies existing um, processes. Uh, you, you, it's used by management to determine the status of your se information security activities. Um, you implement information security in a way that enables business and provides relevant information security to your customers. HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. So this is all about prote protecting patient privacy. Um, and there is, of course, a whole technical side to it. So it talks about privacy and security and um, making sure that uh, all personally, uh, personal health information, PHI, is protected and um, that this is enforced. It was actually updated by something called high tech. Uh, there's SOX, Sarbanes-Oxley. Um, this is to protect investors and the public. It has a bunch of titles and uh, it includes um, having an oversight board and having an independent auditor and your financial report responsibility and disclosures. And to be SOX compliant um, basically is that you have to do everything that's reasonable uh, to make sure that you're protecting your, um, your stakeholders and uh, you're protecting them also from um, corporate and criminal fraud and, and um, make sure that the, uh, the information is not disclosed. So that is Sarbanes-Oxley for publicly traded companies in the U.S. There's um, D DMCA and a FISMA. A DMCA and FISMA are actually not related. A DMCA is, um, this was a treaty to protect intellectual property. And so it defines um, prohibitions against trying to break technology protections. So like, um, there used to be a thing on videotapes that if you tried to copy the tape, uh, there was a uh, there was a code Im implanted into the tape so that you couldn't view it. So um, DMCA is how to protect those kinds of technical protections, and um, to not try to circumvent protect technical protections for protecting intellectual property. FISMA is all about um, federal federal organizations, so the U.S. federal government. So there is a whole information security management uh, thing defined by FISMA. So it's a whole framework to guarantee effectiveness of information security controls for federal uh, government organizations. So it has standards for categorizing your information by mission and by impact, uh, for minimizing um, or setting minimum security requirements, for selecting proper security controls, for assessing the controls in place, and for uh, security authorization. 
And of course, all of these other countries have their own cyber law. And where this has meaning to you is if your client or your company is using technology across borders, like I've got my data center here and my customers here and my something here and my something here, you need to be in compliance with all of those, all of those local jurisdictions, not just your own. Um, because, uh, I mean, and we've seen big tech companies get in trouble in, say, Europe because they're not um, uh, in compliance with, say, European law. So you need to be aware of it. And it's totally up to your legal department to help you figure out where you need to be in compliance um, and how the different parts are going to interact with each other. Not that you need to memorize any of these things, but there are a variety of laws and acts and websites that you can check on for electronic communication privacy, foreign intelligence, intelligence surveillance, um, the very, uh, various privacy acts and computer fraud and abuse, and uh, federal identity theft and uh, assumption deterrence. So just be aware that all of these exist. If you want, you can check these websites. So we can see for trademarks and patents, we can see in Australia, the UK, uh, in China and India, India and Germany. I think it's finally, I think it's kind of funny that China has copyright laws when we are quite aware of Chinese disregard for copyright and intellectual property. But anyway, just realize that um, all these countries, let me go back here, you can see in the US, we've got all of these, and this isn't even a full list. And then in the different countries, we've got various specific laws and acts. You can see even other countries here as well. And if you want, you can check out some of these websites. So with that, that is our introduction to ethical hacking. Let's do a quick review. Ethical hacking, we're trying to discover vulnerabilities before they are actually exploited. And we'll do it by simulating the attack, but just not with a malicious intent. Threats can be against hosts, the network, or applications. You can also look at threats as being against people, processes, and technology. CIA, confidentiality, integrity, availability, is the foundation of all security. Non-repudiation disallows something, somebody from denying they did something. And with that, that's our intro to ethical hacking.